Hello, this is Erica Del Signore, and I'm the founder of Daily Lead Campaign. And this is your weekly money-making mindset and marketing tip, so welcome. Today, we are going to be talking about the seven best types of probing questions. We'll probably do a follow-up on even more questions, or maybe I'll just write a whole bunch on the bottom of this article. But um, most people know that I have a, a big Sandler sales background. And if you don't know what Sandler Sales is, it's just one of the best uh, sales techniques, systems that, that is out there. And I like it because it is not aggressive, but it's, it's really based on listening to the client and the prospect and your people that work for you. So here they are without further ado. The first type is an open-ended question. So asking a question like, what qualities are you looking for in a vendor? Or what types of hours are you looking for in a job? Or uh, how many people do you typically like to work with um, when it comes to this account? So anything that is open-ended where somebody actually has to give you a few sentences back, that's an open-ended question. You do not want to have a closed-ended question which just be yes or no. I'm not going to give you enough information in any scenario. So that's important. The next one are factual questions. So you can ask somebody what specifically are the other problems that they have seen in this area or with this particular service or with vendors like them. You can fill in the blank, but it's finding facts by asking something specific. The next one is attitudinal. So those types of questions are going to be trying to figure out how they feel about certain situations. So even asking them, you know, how did you feel when you made the decision on the last vendor that came in and the customer service issues increased by 15%? Uh, you know, how did that affect your job? I mean, there's a whole pain funnel within Sandler sales that I absolutely love, but it, it gets right down to starting off with the open-ended questions down to very specific questions like, so what's going to happen if you can't solve the problem? and have you given up? And those are fantastic questions. I love those within a sales uh, presentation to figure that out because if they've admitted to having a problem and you've gotten them to say it by asking the right questions, have they given up? It's perfect. Um, so there's a mirroring question where someone may say all of the bids have been way too high and you say, so you're saying the bids have been way too high? And then it evokes them to expand on that question a little bit more with a better answer. Um, another one would be the summary question where you summarize everything they just said. So uh, what you're saying is the bidding process, right now you have about 10 people involved, 10 companies, and when you uh, get that down to two companies, you're going to have that decision within a week after and you're going to decide based on a, B, C, and D. And then you wait to hear them confirm or deny that that's what they just said and maybe they need to add some more specifications and maybe you didn't get it right. So that's a great one. Another one that I love is the reverse. So I had a new company once, it was a recruiting company, and it was not a very old company. I had just started it, and one of the big questions that used to scare me was people would ask me, well, how long have you been in business? Well, a month. <laughs> so instead of answering that way, you can ask them, why is it, you know, is it important to you to have a, a company, is it important to you that a company is a certain, certain age or has you know, a certain amount of experience? and then you've kind of gotten them off of the question of how old you are, but um, you know, find out one of the fears and a little bit more information on you know, some kind of a, a conflict that you might need to overcome. And the last one is the implication question, which is really great. So if, uh, so go something like this. If, if we could show you how we can decrease your customer service issues by the 15%, and we can increase your revenues by 20%. And I'm not saying that we can, but if we could, does that mean you would move forward with our company in this future project? And that's how you would do the implication question. Now, the questions have been a big way of companies 
um, either winning or losing deals. And so it's really important to know the different types of probing, probing questions, know all the questions under there, and figure out how to use them to help benefit you to close, uh, increase your closing ratios. And so hopefully this has been very helpful for you today. And this ends another money-making mindset and marketing tip of the week. I look forward to seeing you next week.